The following is tape number four on the Nectar of Devotion series, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded between October 20th and November 14th, 1972, in Vrindavan, India. When one has got that visa, transcendental visa, samasarveshu bhuteshu madhva, then the devotional service begins. Not that with blunt eyes and senses one can serve God, devotional service. Atasya Krishna namadi namhave gāyam indriyai sīvan mukhi hi jīvhādo sāmayu varsvarattva. This is the process. Uh, so when our senses are engaged in the service of the law, sarvapādhi vinin maktam tatparattena nirmalam, when our senses become purified, rishikena rishikesa sevanam bhakti rucha. At that time the rishik, the senses, are engaged in the service of the law. Because Krishna is Spirit, the super soul, uh, he cannot be served in, by matter. He has to be served with spirit. Hmm. Therefore, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Patram Puspam Phalam Toyam Jumi Bhakta Prajachit. This bhakti is spiritual activity. Because Krishna says bhaktya prajach. If you offer something, Krishna, Krishna has brought a very palatable dish, you take it. Oh, Krishna will not take it. Nahang prakasa sarvasya yoga maya samabhita. He is not exposed to everyone. It is not possible. You cannot serve Krishna if you are not a devote. Therefore, Krishna says, Jumi bhakta prajachati. That is the real thing, bhakta. Not that I have brought a nice plate and Krishna will accept. Not like that. Krishna can accept. When you offer something, it doesn't matter what it is. It may be a simple flower, a fruit, a, a small piece of leaf or little water. This is universal. For worshipping Krishna, there is no impediment. If you want to worship other demigods, there are so many things required. But for worshipping Krishna, the poorest man in the world, any part of the world, he can offer his love, his offering to Krishna. Patram puspam phalam tuyam jumi bhaktya prajachit. So, uh, real purpose of this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami, which are translated by the name Nectar of Devotion, the uh, complete science, uh, the complete science of Bhakti Yoga. This is very important book of understanding how to become purified in devotion and service, how to approach Krishna, how to satisfy Krishna. Uh, these things are described very nice. And Krishna being supreme, the super soul, we cannot approach with our material consciousness. Therefore the consciousness has to be changed. Then we can approach. That is Krishna consciousness. Unless we change our consciousness, just like without being fired, you cannot enter into fire. Hmm? And the Shastra says, without being Brahma, you cannot approach Brahma. Similarly, without being purified of all material contamination, you cannot approach Krishna. Rishikena, Rishikesha. How, what kind of Rishik? Senses. Sarvapādhi vinin muktam tatparatvena nirmala. The senses have to be purified. Tatparatena. Tatparatena means being always attached with Krishna. If you simply see Krishna with your eyes, 
then your eyes will be purified and spiritualized. Because you are touching, just like if you keep yourself always in touch with fire, you become warm. Warm, warmer, warmer. If you put one iron rod in the fire, it becomes warm, warmer, warmer, and at last it becomes red hot. When it is red hot, it is fire. It is no more iron rod. You touch that red hot iron, anywhere it will burn. Similarly, if you keep always in touch with Krishna, you become Krishna, Krishna and you can appreciate what is Krishna. Thank you very much. With the art of my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada and of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, by whose inspiration I have been engaged in the matter of compiling this summary study of Bhakti Rasama Sasindhu. This is the sublime science of devotional service as propounded by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who appeared 500 years ago in West Bengal, India, to propagate the movement of Krishna consciousness. Srila Rupa Goswami begins his great book by offering his respectful obeisances unto Sri Sanatana Goswami, who was his elder brother and spiritual master, and he prays that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu may be very pleasing to him. He further prays Srila Rupa Goswami wanted to please Sanatana Goswami. Our duty is to please the superior, not the public. We are giving service to the public according to the direction of the superior office. We do not manufacture any program of service. That is not our business. Uh, whatever is ordered by the, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is Krishna himself. <coughs> Still, he was following the authority. Uh, uh, Krishna, Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality, he was also uh, referring to the Brahma Sutra. Brahma Sutra Padaishaiva. Uh, Vinishchitam. So, this is the way that any bona fide uh, spiritual propaganda must be following the footsteps of previous authority. At the present moment it has become a fashion to manufacture some idea. But that is not the basic way. Vedic way is to receive the message through parampara system. Evang parampara pratnam evang raja sayogi. Not to deviate the parampara. The Sanatana Goswami was taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continually for two months personally in Benaras, Baranas. Therefore, he is our authority. The Hari Bhakti Vilas, the Gauriya Vaishnava Sampradaya, they follow the principles of Hari Bhakti Vilas. In that Hari Bhakti Vilas, Sanatana Goswami recommends Tatha Dikha Vidhani na Dijatang Jayati Nina. Dikha Vidhan by the process of Dikha. Uh, a, any human being can be elevated to the position of a bona fide Brahman. Vidhan, Vidhan, the very word is used, Vidhan. Vidhan means bona fide process. Tatha dikha Vidhan. There is another good suggestion. Jatha kāṅchana tāṅ jāti kāṅsa rasa vidhāne. Rasa, rasa means, another meaning of rasa means 
อาจจะสอนไอ้ฟาร์เกตนี่เมทัลฮะน่าน่าด่าเลยเลดลิควิดเมทัลฮะมาร์คไอมาร์คไอฮะไฮโดรกส์อะไรสกอลไฮโดรน้อไอ้ไอ้นั่นเป็นเนมิสฮะไฮโดรจีไร That is the chemical name of mercury. You know it, h y d r o g e n i d e Yes. I'm going to h y d r o g e n i d e Yes. This is another name of the mercury, h y d r o g e n i d e So, in Sanskrit, it is called rasa. Rasayan from mercury, rasa. The chemistry <coughs> is called rasayan shastra. Actually, Rasan Shastra chemical composition begins from mercury and sulfur. That is beginning of chemical composition. <coughs> so, Rasa Vidhane na by chemical interaction of sulfur and mercury, if you can add tin and copper, then it becomes gold. You can manufacture gold, provided you know the process how to mix up copper, tin, and mercury with the medium of sulfuric acid. Uh, sulfuric acid is the mother of chemical. Without sulfur, you cannot make any com- chemical composition. Uh, therefore, all chemical composition are called sulfate. Sulfide, like that. <coughs> so, s o n a t a n Goswami gives this idea of chemical composition. It appears that he knew how to work with chemicals. Jatha kanchana tang jati kangsa rasa vidhana ta tatha dikha vidhani na dijatam jayate ni na. So. We are trying to follow s a n a t a n Goswami by dikha vidhane na, by initiating uh, person any from anywhere. It does not matter because in this a s e college, the dikha vidhan is performed according according to p a n c h a r a t r i k i vidhi, not v a i d i k vidhi. v a i d i k vidhi is very strict. Unless one is bona fide son of a d i j a the initiation was not given to the sudras. There was no initiation. Brahman, c h a t r i y a Vaishya. Ah, so these are the Vedic process. So in the Kali Yuga, because it is to be understood. That everyone is a sudra, therefore b o d h i k vidhan cannot be applied. b o d h i k vidhan requires that one must be a, born by a brahmin c h a t r i y a then he is eligible for being initiated. But in the kali j o g that is not possible. Therefore, the p a n c h a r a t r i k i vidhi is accepted. Narad Panchra. t a t h a d i k h a v i d h a n e n a This d i k h a v i d h a n recommended by s a n a t a n Goswami, means Panchratriki Vidhi. Now, Rupa Goswami says in his Bhakti r a s a m r i t a s i n d u Suti Smriti Puranadi Panchratriki Vidhi Vina. o i k a n t h i k i h a r e r h a k t i u t p a t a y a k a l p a t Without undergoing the process of Suti, Vedas, Smriti, the Puranas, and other corollary literatures, Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, Smriti, uh, Manu Smriti, the laws given by Manu, Parasa, so. Uh, p a r i v a k t i devotional service 
to the Lord must be approved by Vedas, Puranas, Pancharatriki Vidhi. Otherwise, any show of devotional service is simply disturbance. Anyone can manufacture, and it is being supported by some very big missionary activities, jatama tato You can manufacture your way of religious principle. But that is not Vedic way. Vedic way is even parampara prapt. Uh, although we are initiating uh, people from low-grade society, still following the principles of Pancharatriki Vidhi, injunction of the Goswamis, therefore it is Brahma. Bhagavad Vidhi, Pancharatriki Vidhi, that Brahma fight Vidhi. So, Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, first offers his respectful obeisance to his elder brother, Sanatana Goswami, because Rupa Goswami accepted him as spiritual master, and he was initiated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami also. So he offers his respectful obeisance to Sanatana Goswami. By residing in that ocean of knowledge, can we always feel transcendental pleasure in the service of Radha and Krishna? Yes. Ocean of nectar. The Mayavadi philosophers generally they give this example that the, all the rivers they flow down to the ocean. Uh, this example is generally given that when the river mixes with the ocean, it doesn't matter uh, which course it is following, after all it is coming to the uh, ocean, merging into the ocean. So that is ultimate liberation. But uh, this uh, an- analogy Analogy, if you give some analogy, you must consider all the similar points. That is the way of analogy. The more you have got similar points, then the analogy is perfect. So the rivers merging into the ocean, then you must take further consideration that the superficial water mixing with the ocean is again evaporated. The water is evaporated by scorching heat of the sun, just like now we see cloud in the sky. This is nothing but evaporated water from the sea. So the water which merged into the water and to the ocean of the water, water of the ocean, now it is evaporated in the sky, and again it will fall down, and then again glide to the ocean. So this is called avagaman, coming and going, coming and going. But our uh, Vaishnava philosophy is not to merge into the water, but keep your identity and go deep into the water, so that you may not be evaporated. The fish and the aquatic animals within the water, they are not evaporated. They are not going to become cloud and again fall down. Therefore, Sanatana Rupa Goswami says, he further prays that by residing in the ocean of nectar, he may always feel transcendental pleasure. Ah. Our philosophy is go back to home, back to Godhead. 
not in the spiritual sky, parabham. Spiritual sky, there is chance of falling down. Why chance? It is sure. Those who are merging into the Brahma effulgent, the Shastra says that they again fall down. Arucha kritchena param padam tata patanti adha. Arucha kritchena. They, Gyanis, uh, they undergo severe austerities, penances, to merge into the existence of impersonal Brahma, but uh, they fall down again. Uh, they fall down again because they have no shelter. Anadita jusma tangra. As as in this sky, there are many planets. You can go with high speed to the moon planet or Venus planet. But if you have no shelter to stay there, you come back again on this earthly planet. That is practically experience. Similarly, you may merge into the Brahma Infalgence. That's like our plane goes very high, and at a certain point we see it is invisible, merged. Actually it is not merged. Uh, our uh, eyes cannot see anymore. They take it as merge. Therefore, Jiva Goswami, this merging principle, he has explained, just like a green bird enters into a green tree, it, it appears that the bird is no longer existing to the imperfect eyes, but the bird is existing. We cannot see both the tree and the bird being green. We see it has merged. Uh, because the spiritual sky and the spiritual living being is small, it merges means it does not merge. It is there. The individuality is there. And because this individuality fragment of the Supreme Brahma is eternal, sanātana. It is not that spirit can be cut into pieces, acchedyam, adājhayam. Spirit cannot be cut into pieces. That is not possible. So we are fragmental parts. That means eternally we are so, individual. Nitya nityānāṁ cetana cetanāna. We are one of the nittas. There are innumerable nittas and chetanas, the living entities, part and parcel of the supreme living entity, Krishna. Uh, they are all individual. Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, my dear Rajan, do not think that I, you, or all these soldiers and kings who have assembled, in this battlefield, they are not existing in the past. They were. And they are existing at present, and similarly they will exist in the future. That is stated in the Bhagavad So where is the question of merging and loss of individuality? The individuality remains. It remained in the past. It is at the present moment, it is continuing. And in the future also they will remain the same way. Uh, this is clearly explained in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So merging does not mean always that losing one's individuality. The individuality is there. Therefore, the theory of merging into the existence of impersonal Brahma is to stay there for some time, again fall down. Just like the same example, that the water of the rivers, they merge into the ocean, but again it is evaporate in the sky, and it falls. Again goes through the river, merges. Bhutta bhutta pralīyate. 
one manif- once manifested and again merging. This is going on. So our philosophy is that once going into the ocean, no more coming back. Tatta dehang punar jalmanaiti mame ti kaunti. That is our philosophy. If we once go in the spiritual world, we do not like to come back. We stay with Krishna and dance with Him, or play with Him, or serve, with, serve Him as tree, as plant, as water, as cows, as land, as cowherd boys, as father, mother, or as gopis. This is our philosophy. Once we go to Krishna, we live forever with Him in either of these capacities. Let me live at Vrindavan in any capacity, it doesn't matter, but live there. Uh, therefore, uh, He says that He further prays that by residing in that ocean of nectar, he may always feel eternally, continually, without any cessation, ah, ānandamāya abhyāsā, to remain ānandamāya. That is the principle of Vaishnava philosophy. Go on. It is also a respectful obeisance to all the great devotees and acharyas or holy teachers who are compared with sharks in the great ocean of nectar and you do not care for the various rivers of liberation. Impersonalists are very fond of merging into the Supreme, like rivers that come down and merge into the ocean. The ocean can be compared with liberation, and the rivers with all the different paths of liberation. The impersonalists are dwelling in the river water, which eventually comes to mix with the ocean. They have no information, however, that within the ocean, as within the river, there are innumerable aquatic living entities. The sharks who dwell in the ocean do not care for the rivers which are gliding down into it. Yes, the shark, big fish, shark, the big body, uh, they have no place to come into the river, come back. There is no place. Uh, a big crocodile, big shark, they do not come to the river. They constantly remain in the ocean. Uh, uh, one. Yes. The devotees eternally live in the ocean of devotional service, and they do not care for the rivers. In other words, those who are pure devotees always remain in the ocean of transcendental loving service to the Lord, and have no business with the other processes which are compared to the rivers that only gradually come to the ocean. Srila Rupa Goswami prays to his spiritual master, Srila Sanadana Goswami, for the protection of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the ocean of the pure nectar of devotional service, from the argumentative logicians who unnecessarily meddle in the science of service to the Lord. He compares their arguments and logic to volcanic eruptions in the midst of the ocean. Yes. Natastakena Jyojaya. Achinta khaluji bhava natas tarkena juja. Simply by arguments, logic, you cannot understand Krishna. That is the Vedic injunction. Tarka pratishtha. You cannot establish the truth by simple logic and argument. You may be a very great logician. But somebody may come who is greater logician than you, and he defeats you. That is going on. Tarka pratishta sutayo vibhinna. Now if you read the Vedas, you will find some contradiction. Not contradiction, but to the neophyte, it appears to be contradiction. Just like we have cited the example, the animal stool is impure, but the cow dung is pure. So by logic you can say the cow dung is also the stool of an animal, how it becomes pure. 
But in Vedas we'll find such thing. Uh, therefore, by simple studying without surrendering yourself to the spiritual master, you will find all these contradictions and you will be bewildered. Sutayo vivinna. They are not vivinna, but to our limited knowledge, sometimes they appear as vivinna, different. Sutaya vivinna nasu munijya samatangla vinnam. And you won't find a philosopher who does not agree, who does not uh, disagree with other philosophers. Therefore, dharmasya tattang nihitang guhayam mahajana jena gata sapant. We have to follow the footsteps of great acharyas. That is the way. These mahajanas are described in this hastra like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Sambhu, Narada, Sambhu, Kapila, Kumara, Manu. They are all mentioned. So you follow any one of these great personalities, Brahma, Brahma is the greatest personality within this universe, and he has got his sampradaya, which is known as Brahma sampradaya. Similarly, Lord Shiva has also his sampradaya, which is called Rudra sampradaya. Similarly, Narad Pancharatra, uh, Kumar sampradaya. So, follow the sampradaya. Sampradaya vihinasti mantrasti vifalamat. If you do not follow any bona fide sampradaya, then your path of spiritual advancement will be baffled. You will simply waste your time. Vifalamat. <coughs> Hmm. We should follow the footsteps of great acharyas, then our progress is uh, positive. There is no fear. Uh, so, to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just like Rupa Goswami is describing, describing here, with, that he wants to take shelter of the ocean. Uh, deep into the ocean, and he doesn't care for uh, the rivers. And the, what is called Barwagni, there is some wheeling pool in the water, that is compared with the argument. Sometimes these logicians, they create argumental calamity in the process of devotional service. But Rupa Goswami recommends that we should not be deviated by the arguments, karmis, gyanis, and yogis. Uh, let them do their own business. We do not care for them. Uh, we give them respect as far as possible, but we don't accept the path of karma jnana yoga. Jnana karma dhanabhritam. Jnana karma dhanabhrita. Annabilasita sunnam jnana karma dhanabhrita. We should not be deviated by the process of karma, jnana, yoga. Uh, that is pure devotional service, Shuddha bhakti. Uh, Shuddha bhakti. We should stay, we should fix up in Shuddha bhakti path. That is the recommendation of Srila Rupa Goswami. Uh, gone. In the midst of the ocean, such volcanic eruptions can do very little harm. And similarly, those who are against devotional service to the Lord and who put forward many philosophical theses about the ultimate transcendental realization cannot disturb this great ocean of devotional service. Well, the author of Bhakti Asamasa Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami, very humbly submits that he is just trying to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, although he humbly thinks himself unfit for this work. That should be the attitude of all preachers of the Krishna consciousness movement, following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami. 
We should never think of ourselves as great preachers, but should always consider that we are simply instrumental to the previous Acharya, and mm. simply by following in their footsteps, we may be able to do something for the benefit of suffering humanity. Yes. That's right. Narottam Das Thakur says, Tadera Charana Sebi Bhakta Sane Bhav. Tadera Charana Sebi. Our main business is Hey, hey. <laughs> hmm. So, our main business is to serve the Acharya. This Krishna Consciousness Movement means why we are trying to serve the Acharya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his direct disciples, the Sarabhushamis, and their disciples, Rupa Raghunatho Pade Hai Vyakuti, that is required. Tadera Charana Sevi Bhakta Sane Bhak, Janame Janame Mar Ehi Abhila. So this society is attempting uh, to create a society of devotees all over the world without any discrimination of caste, creed, color. One must be a devotee of Krishna. Jai Krishna Tattva Vetta Sai Guru. One must know the science of Krishna. Then he can preach to others. Sai Guru. That is our purpose. Uh, People may not misunderstand our propagation that we are proselytizing some persons uh, to Hinduism. Uh, uh, yesterday, one so called uh, Jani came to me and he challenged me that Swamiji uh, formally. The Christians used to convert the Hindus, and the Mohammedans used to convert the Hindus in the Mohammedanism or Christianism. Now you are converting the Christians into Hinduism. Then where is the difference between their activities and your activities? So this fool does not know this is not making a person from Christian to Hindu. This is not the process. We are not interested. I never said in any meeting in the Western country that Hindu religion is better than your Christian religion. You give up your Christian religion and come to Hindu religion. No, that was not my purpose. There are many old students here present. They may remember. I never made propaganda. Rather, when they inquired whether one can attain perfection by following Christian principle, I said yes. <coughs> so our propaganda is not to proselytize people from Christian to Hinduism. Our propaganda is to uh, make everyone know this fact that everyone is eternally servant of Krishna. That is our purpose. Jivere Sarupai Nitya Krishna Das. That is our purpose. We are trying to convince people that your original position is servant of Krishna. You have now forgotten that you revive your Krishna consciousness and you will become happy. That is our problem. <coughs> Do not misunderstand that we are trying to spread Hinduism. Hinduism is a uh, fictitious term 
बिकॉज देर इज नो फिक्स ऑफ कॉन्क्लूजन समर इज एक्सेप्टिंग दी समर इवन दी जैंस एंड दी सिक्स एंड मेनी आदर सब रिलीजन्स दे आर ऑल्सो रूल बाय दी हिंदू रूल्स हिंदू लॉ सो एक्चुअली दिस वर्ड हिंदू इज गिवन बाय दी महामेडन्स वी डोंट फाइंड दिस वर्ड इन दी वेदिक लिटरेचर हिंदू इट इज लेटर आई मीन से प्रक्षिप्त और इन भगवद गीता आई वॉन्ट फाइंड दी वर्ड हिंदू और इन श्रीमद भागवतम और एनी अदर वेदिक लिटरेचर दिस इज दे कॉन्वेंशन ऑफ लेटेस्ट स्टेज एक्चुअली वी दी फॉलोअर्स ऑफ वेदिक प्रिंसिपल आवर सिस्टम इज वर्णाश्रम धर्म फोर वर्णस एंड फोर आश्रम दिस इज दिस कैन बी एप्लीकेबल बट वर्णाश्रम धर्म इज एप्लीकेबल इन एनी एनी वे चातुर्वर्ण मया सिस्टम गुण कर्म विभाग the creation of god just like sun sun is creation of god sun is visible everywhere not that something american sun and something indian sun no the sun is the same similarly chaturvarnam the four principles of division brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra they are everywhere ah it is not the monopoly of india anywhere there is intelligent class of men god conscious men they are called brahmana anywhere who are prepared to fight for the right cause administrator kshatriyas anywhere who are interested in business trade agriculture they are called vaishyas and anywhere who are simply satisfied by serving others is called shudra so our principle is not to proselytize from christian to hindu or mohammedan to hindu we are teaching simply how to revise his old constitutional position to become servant of krishna this is krishna consciousness <coughs> so it is applicable anywhere and everywhere but it's not that it is monopoly of india or for the hindus no and actually it is being accepted practically in all countries even from all religious sect in our society uh there are uh, boys and girls they are coming from christian group jews group mohammedan group but when they come here all of them become the servant of krishna that is krishna consciousness thank you very much <clears throat> the ocean is sometimes divided into four parts and there are different sections within each of these four divisions <coughs> originally in bhakti rasamrita sindhu the ocean is divided like the watery ocean into east west north and south while the subsections within these different divisions are called waves as in the ocean there are always different waves either on the eastern side the western side the northern side or the southern side so similarly bhakti rasamrita sindhu has different waves in the first part there are four waves the first being a general description of devotional service the second concerns the regulative principles for executing devotional service and the third wave is devotional service in ecstasy in the fourth is the ultimate goal love of god these will be explicitly described along with their different symptoms the authorized description of bhakti or devotional service chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, compared a bhakti as a great ocean so when he was speaking before rupa goswami he said uh that it is just like a ocean so i will take a drop of it and you test it and you will understand what is this ocean just like i testing one drop of sea water 
we can understand the taste of the whole ocean. Similarly, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described a, a small portion of Bhakti Rasa Amrita Sindhu, Bhakti Rasa Amrita. Bhakti devotion service, there is a rasa, taste. And the taste is uh, amrita, eternal. Uh, here also we have got taste for any relationship. That's why right. we have got our relationship with master and servant. So this relationship is a parvati reflection of the real uh, master and servant. Here it is parvati because the master also does not love the servant and the servant also does not love the master. The servant serves the master so long there is payment. If the payment is stopped, then no more the servant will be available. Uh, but in the eternal world, the Krishna servant, uh, so that is eternal, uh, without any payment. Mama janmani janmani sare bhavata bhakti rahoi tuki. Ahoi tuki. The servants of God, or Krishna, they serve Krishna not for any material gain. Ahuitik, uh, therefore this word is used. Ahuitik, without any cause or motive. That is real bhakti. Therefore, this bhakti word is applicable only in relationship with God or Krishna. In the material world, there cannot be any use of the word bhakti, because here the so-called divorce and service is motivated. Uh, so this bhakti word is monopolized by Krishna and nobody else. Go on. For devotional service, following in the footsteps of previous Acharya can be summarized in the following statement of Srila Rupa Goswami. Quote, First class devotional service is known by one's tendency to be fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, serving the Lord favorably. Unquote. Yes. Uh, Anukullena Krishna Anusilanam Bhakti Uttava. This is the first statement of bhakti given by Srila Rupa Goswami. First class devotional service is known by one's tendency to be fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, serving the Lord favorably, not unfavorably. Anukul Pratikul. Anukullasa sankalpa or pratikullam vivarjan. Bhakti means we should simply accept what is favorable to Krishna. What is not favorable to Krishna, that we shall not accept. Just like Arjun, in the beginning, he declined to fight. He was thinking favorable to his own senses, that if I kill my brother, grandfather, nephews, those who are on the other side, they have come to fight with me, so I can kill them, I can own victory over them, but what is the profit? Uh, if my relatives, friends and all others die, then what is the use of my become victorious? That was his. That means he was thinking in his favor. Uh, Krishna wanted that you must fight. You are a Kshatriya. Uh, it is your duty to fight. You are my friend. If you go away, fly away from this battlefield, what people will say? 
that Krishna's friend has gone. So, this is not good. Uh, so, when he could not be convinced, then Krishna had to speak the whole Bhagavad Gita. Then after hearing Bhagavad Gita, Krishna inquired from Arjuna, what is your decision now? Are you going to fight or not? Uh, so Arjun said, yes, my illusion is over. Nasto moha sriti labdhya tat prasadena madhusudha. So, kari se bhajananta. Yes, I shall fight. So this is favorable to Krishna. Ah. So we have to see what is favorable to Krishna, not sense gratification, not favorable to me or to my country or to my society. No self-interest, only Krishna's interest. That is what. Ah. So by fighting, Arjun became a great devotee. Bhaktosi, priyosi me. Krishna certified that you are my greatest devotee. You are my very confidential friend. But what did he do? He did not read Vedanta philosophy. Uh, he was a grihastha, a king, uh, engaged in fighting. He knew how to fight only. He did not know what is Vedanta philosophy. But still, he became a great devotee of Krishna, bhaktosi. So what is the criterion? The criterion is that he fought favorably. He did favorably to Krishna consciousness. That is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. What is the difference between calm and... Uh, calm means lust and love. Calm and prem. Prema is love, and karma is lust. It appears similar. In the material world, lust is going on in the name of love. A boy loves a girl, a girl loves a boy. But actually, the boy also wants sense gratification, and the girls also want sense gratification. That is not love. As soon as there is any uh, difficulty and sense gratification, immediately there is divorce. So there is no love. Uh, there is only lust. In the material world, there is no love. Uh, therefore, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Kar, the author of Chaitanya Chaitamrita, he has distinguished between love and lust. Uh, he said, Atmendriya tripti vancha tar nam kam. When you want to satisfy your senses, that is called lust. Krishnendriya tripti vancha dhare prem nam. When you want to satisfy the senses of Krishna, oh, that is love. Just like Arjuna. In the beginning, he wanted to satisfy his own senses. I shall not fight, because if the other party, my brothers and grandfathers, they leave, I shall be happy. So that is calm, that is not frame. But when he agreed to fight, because Krishna wanted it, nimitta matra bhava so that is frame. So Krishna frame can be executed in so many ways. Uh, simply Krishna should be satisfied. That is prayer. That is Krishna concept. Uh, so at the present moment, uh, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita wanted sarva dhanman paritajya mami kang saranang vaj. Krishna wanted Arjun. Arjun means everyone that they should surrender to Krishna and be engaged in the service of Krishna. Uh, the people, Krishna, when you speak of Krishna, means God, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
So this Krishna consciousness movement is propagating yeah, to serve Krishna. When Krishna was present, he demanded that you surrender unto me, and we are preaching, you surrender unto Krishna. What is the difference? There is no difference. Ah. So the same thing, what was spoken five thousand years ago by Krishna personally, we Krishna cons we Krishna conscious men, because we are known in the world as Hare Krishna people. They write in the newspaper, the Hare Krishna people. So our preaching is the same. We don't change. We present therefore Bhagavad Gita as it is. Krishna says that everyone should surrender unto him. We are preaching the same philosophy that you surrender to Krishna. Krishna says, Manvana Bhavamad Bhakta Majaji Mang Namaskuru. We say the same thing. We ask everyone that you become a devotee of Krishna, you think of Krishna constantly, you worship Krishna, you offer your obeisances unto Krishna. So this is favorable. If we preach what Krishna said five thousand years ago, that is favorable. That is Krishna consciousness. To act in favor of Krishna means Krishna consciousness movement. Gone. Purport is that one may also be in Krishna consciousness unfavorably, but that cannot be counted as pure devotional service. Pure devotional service should be free from the desire for any material benefit or for sense gratification, as these desires are cultivated through fruitive activities and philosophical <coughs> speculation. Yes. Sense gratification, I, as I was explaining in a minute before, Chaitanya Chaitamita Kar says, Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Shakoli Asant. Bhukti. Bhukti means karmis. They want sense enjoyment. So long they live here in this body, they enjoy their senses to the topmost and they make provision for the next life to be elevated in the heavenly planet to enjoy in the Nandan Kanan with the demigods. More standard of living, enjoyment, more opulent. That is the desire of the karmis. Jnanis, they say, Brahma Sattva Jagan Mithya. This world is false. There is no enjoyment, actual enjoyment, to merge into the existence of Brahma. Uh, so that is also a subtle sense enjoyment. Leave this world and enter into Brahma, then you feel happy. So that is also sense enjoyment. 